Hello everybody, welcome to Pass the Mic Mondays on the Late Boy Scout channel. I am not Shane, I'm Brian from Slicey Dicey, link to my channel will be down below. Thank you very, very much to Shane for allowing me to do this, to allow me to borrow his uh, many, many, many thousand subscribers. I very much appreciate that. He'll be back next week, I swear. So don't panic, he's fine, everything's fine. He just let me fill in for a day. He's going to let a few other YouTubers do it. I think I'm the first one. And it's a real honor, even if I'm the last one, it's a real honor to to be asked to do it. I've watched this channel since I got into Knives. It's one of the very first Knife channels that I really started watching. Well, he does more than Knives, but I was watching him mostly for the Knives. And I do really, really enjoy his videos. I think we have pretty similar tastes and stuff. I don't think I really horribly disagreed with anything that he's ever posted that I can recall. Uh, but at, just an honor to be on this channel and to talk to all... 200 and some thousand plus subs of you. I, I really do appreciate that. And the link to my channel will be down below. If you like what you see here, go check it out. It's not always like this. I don't always do face reveal videos. I do a lot of the desktop, you know, just looking at my hands kind of stuff. But I do a few of these. We do live shows. Go check that out. And thanks again to Shane. What's this video going to be about? Well, as the title probably says, he told, told me I could do whatever I wanted. I did a video somewhat similar to this, but it was a long time ago. It was like a year and a half ago. And I really wanted to update it anyway, and I was going to do that on my channel, but when I got the opportunity to do this, I thought, let's put it on here. Show everybody what I'm all about. Gives you an idea of my tastes. This is the most underrated EDC knives, top 10 most underrated EDC knives, in my opinion. Uh, now, it's not necessarily the best. I'm not saying that they are the best. I just think that they are not getting the attention or the traction that they deserve. Some just due to age, some due to um, just poor marketing, some due to maybe some initial QC issues that have been long since fixed, but everybody's still ignoring them. So let's just go down the list. They're in no particular order. These are all available. I made sure they are all knives that you can still buy. Uh, it's a thing on my channel too. I don't like showing knives that, that you can't buy. So let's get going. Uh, first up would be the Spyderco Chaparral. Now, if you are a Spyderco fan or a really hardcore knife enthusiast. It's pretty hard to call this underrated. Everybody knows about the Chaparral. It's a great knife. But I think to a lot of new people coming into the hobby, they skip right over it. And I just don't think that's a, that's a smart thing to do. This is an awesome, awesome knife. This is the peel ply carbon. This is the basically the original version. XHP steel made in Taichung, Taiwan, which if you know, that's the a lot of the really nice spider goes come out of Taichung. And it's just a screaming laser beam of a knife. This one is uh, 140 bucks in this configuration. You can also go to Refier Noble. That's a few bucks more. And they have a few other special edition colors and stuff they do every now and then. But there's also a lightweight for $95, which is basically the exact same knife, but it has uh, FRN scales, bi-directional FRN scales. And that's a knife that is especially overlooked, I think, because if you're looking at getting a Delica, um, I don't know why. <laughs> I, th I think that the... Uh, the Chaparral Lightweight is a much better knife, and that's the, the way that I would send you. But I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just that it's a backlog, it's not exciting, but people just go to other stuff or names they hear more often. The Chaparral name doesn't get mentioned nearly as much as, like I said, like the Delica or something like that. But take another look on these. Don't don't sleep on these. They are great knives. Uh, next up, we're going to have one that I think was a, a victim of uh, initial QC issues and a, another little flaw that well, well, I'll explain it. But the Kershaw Bare Knuckle. This happens to be a 20 CV version. Uh, you can find it on Smoky Mountain Knife Works. It's their exclusive. They're still available at the time I'm doing this. Even 20 CV, it's only 100 bucks. The regular version with 14C28N and gray handles is uh, 68 bucks. Am I getting that right? I made notes. $73. Um, great knife. Just a great EDC knife. Great EDC size. Great EDC blade. Nice thin handle deep carry clip, super easy to carry, great ergos. There were absolutely definitely some QC issues on the first batches of them. Uh, that is that is uh, not to be denied. USA made, by the way. Um, that is not to be denied. There definitely were. Mine was fine, but I know enough guys that I respect and they aren't idiots to know that, yeah, there were some QC issues. Another thing that people freaked out about initially is they would say it would death lock when you... Uh, when you close, it's a subframe lock, and if you put any pressure in that lock bar when you try to open it, you know, you can't possibly get it open. Well, it's harder, but it's not impossible. And B, uh, don't do not do that. That's kind of my, my response. It's not hard at all to, uh, to flip the knife open without touching that lock bar. It's nothing. And 
some of the detents are a bit strong and out of the box, but they break in really well. This one is pretty brand new, so it's not as broken as my old one. My old one, after a couple, three months of use, man, that thing is as smooth as any ZT I've ever handled. And it was 68 bucks at the time. Now I think they're 73, yeah. But it was like 68 bucks at the time. And just, this one still, even being brand new, never being lubed up or anything, it's still pretty darn drop shutty. Just a great knife that I think more people should look at. Forget about the old QC issues. They're, they're gone, they fixed it. I haven't heard of anybody having any recent problems with them is basically what I'm saying. Uh, next up would be what I think is the best Spyderco of 2019. And it was one that got a little bit of attention initially, but since then, crickets. And that is the Spyderco Native Chief. It is a big sucker. It is, in my opinion, not only the best Spyderco they made in 2019, I prefer it of all the other big Spydercos, like your police, the military... I like it better than all of those. I've never been a big fan of any of those. I love the Native Chief. It is a fantastic knife, four-way clip, S30V, back lock, pretty slim to carry. Ergonomics are excellent. It's nothing particularly exciting about it, except I think it looks great. I find that to be exciting, but it's whether you like it or not. It's basically an elongated version of the Native design. And you know, everybody loves the Native, but the Native Chief just hasn't taken off as much as, as I thought it would. There, there is a sprint run of it out this year in Rex 45, I believe. So hopefully that reignites a little flame under again. This is a pretty new knife to call underrated, but it's it just doesn't feel like uh, anybody really cares that much about it. And they're talking more about all the other new Spyderco releases. And I think this is the best thing they came out with last year. Uh, next up would be one that I think it's overlooked now, mostly just due to age. But when you hear people talk about... Uh, you know, three and a half inch kind of mid-size EDC knives. You're talking about PM2s. You're going to talk about all kinds of stuff like that. You don't ever hear anybody talk about the good old Cold Steel American Lawman. Or, as we call it on my channel, due to this logo, hopefully this focuses, the American Lawman. And why do we call it that? Because I said in my first review that logo looks like the logo of a 1980s kung fu action television show starring Chuck Norris. So... It was a joke I made. I made that little song. Everybody laughs about it. Somebody did a full version of the song. Somebody wrote lyrics and stuff. It, it's it's become a thing. But uh, I love the American Law, man. It's a, just a great, comfortable knife. A superb ergonomics. This is an older XHP version. They're now S35VN. But slicey as all get out. And it's got that really tough triad lock. They're really lightweight. And it's just it's primarily the ergos. This thing just fits my hand better than almost any knife that I own. It is fantastic. Really love this. Great, great knife from Cold Steel. And it gets all overlooked even amongst Cold Steels. Uh, even the Code 4, I think, people talk about more than the American Lawman. Just check one of these out. And they're, uh, how much is, yeah, they're only 95 bucks. 95 bucks, S35VN. You're paying 130 something for a PM2. Yeah, you might, you might want to think about this. Uh, next up would be the Best Tech Texel. This is a new release for 2019 that I am guilty of also overlooking. Absolutely. Uh, it came out mid uh, mid to late 2019 and just nobody's talked about it. And I did the same thing. When I did my uh, top 10 of 2019, I didn't have one. And I just kind of forgotten about it. And then grabbed one, threw it in a cart, and got it. And I made a big mistake. Um, Adam Purvis Design. Excellent construction, D2 steel, action on it. It's just amazing. 52 bucks. Can't go wrong. The action is just so amazing. I love the sheep's footy blade. It's just a great blade design. It's a pretty good little slicer and also has a pretty good tip on it. So it's not not you know it's not dainty by any stretch of the imagination. Ergos are excellent. Looks cool. I like the red backspacer. There's almost nothing I don't like about this knife. Like almost absolutely nothing. Great knife that if you're looking for a budget knife. Best Tech doesn't always come up in everybody's mind. Best Tech is doing a lot more higher-end stuff lately. Maybe people are thinking they're more expensive than they are. But, yeah, I heard anecdotally they're not moving as many of these as I thought they would. You, you got you to gotta get your hands on one of these. They are outstanding. Uh, next up would be a knife that I think just gets lost in the shuffle of its compatriots. And that would be the TRM Atlas. Now, TRMs are extremely popular. You have the Atom which won all kinds of awards, including mine. The Neutron, the year before that, won all kinds of awards. Great knives, absolutely. You have the new nerd that's out, everybody's raving about.
but the Atlas is one of their not older models. It's only a couple years old, but it's just a slip joint, little two and a half inch blade slip joint, nice pocket clip on it, but it is an excellent slip joint. Probably my favorite slip joint that I own. Uh, I have to go to travel to Europe every now and then. And the last time I went, I was there for like two weeks. This is the only knife I brought. The only knife I felt like I needed because it's legal everywhere, you know, but uh, one hand open and just a really cool little knife. I really do enjoy it. This is a carbon fiber one. You can get all kinds of different scales, and it has the usual party trick that TRMs have, that you can change the scales without having to take the pivot off or adjust anything. It takes two seconds to change scales. Scales are really cheap. I call them Barbie doll knives because you can have four or five different sets of scales and just change them on what your mood is that day. Maybe one day you're in the mood for brown micarta. The next day you want white G10. Who knows? You can just change them at will. They are awesome little knives. Now, uh, next up would be Another Spider Co. And this one was uh, another, I guess you'd call it a QC issue, design issue. This is the QCI version. This is the new one that they went back and fixed. But this is the Spider Co. Ikuchi. Just an excellent little gentleman's knife. Actually, a fairly large gentleman's knife. Three and a quarter inch blade. Uh, I love the look of it. I love that Persian. And I just, I, I like the peel ply carbon. As you saw, I had the chaparral and the peel ply carbon. Uh, some people didn't really hate it. I, I like it. I think it looks really good on this knife. I like wire pocket clips, uh, but the initial version did have a somewhat fatal flaw, and that was when the blade was closed. Hopefully I can show here in this camera angle. When the blade was closed, uh, you could definitely uh, catch your catch your finger, and on the, or uh, uh, more down here, up here too, but down here on the end, you could absolutely catch yourself on it, and they fixed that, as you can see. That's no longer an issue. It's not an issue up here either. I heard somebody say in a comment that that was still a problem, but it's definitely not a problem for me. I can't get my finger down in there at all to even remotely touch it. I saw like one blade issue review, but yeah, it was uh, it was easier to cut yourself with it closed than with it open, and that's not good. But they fixed it in the QCI. Not only did they fix that, it also now runs on the pivot bushing that all the CQI ones from Taichung, this is also a Taichung knife, have. Uh, you're looking at... Um, I got 140 bucks for one of these. I had to reference my notes. Um, it's a pretty good value for a Spider Co. Honestly, uh, some Spider Co.s are horribly overpriced. Looking at you, Shaman. Uh, this one is not. Really cool little wheel wheel lock or wheel flipper. Just a neat way to open it. Neat looking knife. It's in a really classy kind of looking knife. Maybe maybe a bit scary looking for a gentleman's knife if you want to open this in an office or something. But uh, it's just a really fun knife to fidget and play with. Really enjoy it. The Spider Co. Ikuchi. Uh, next up, this is in that similar sort of vein, but I think is definitely the most overlooked thing that Benchmade makes because this is a great knife, and especially uh, when you're talking about a Benchmade, a outstanding value, which you don't normally say that about Benchmades, and that would be the Benchmade Valet. These have been out for several years. And people just don't talk anymore. They still make them. Uh, M390 steel. You don't get much better than that. Really, really nicely done G10 scales. Like I said, 175 bucks. Not bad at all. It's a pretty good value. Now, they have made special editions that are, you know, were a really expensive. They've done a couple of gold class versions. There's still one from Shinola you can get that has wood scales. That's like 200 But even at 200 with wood scales, that's, that's not bad at all. Nice deep carry clip, maybe a bit big for this knife, and you can't just put a bug out clip on it, like which is my solution to everything with Benchmade because it does have a unique hole pattern on it. But uh, really, really, really love the valet, and I don't understand why more people don't don't ever talk about it. Just a great little knife. It's not terribly big, but it's a really great knife. Uh, next up, I would say, is the. Southern Grind Spider Monkey. Uh, this is mine. I love the Spider Monkey. Uh, I, I actually bought this at Blade HQ. I went over there and was planning on, they told me I could buy whatever I wanted at a slight discount because they knew who I was and I did a little tour and stuff. And I had no intentions of getting this until one of the people behind the counter, Melinda, made me handle it. And I love this knife now. It is one of my absolute favorites that I own. Again, this is another knife. If you're a real knife nerd, you do hear people talking about it. But amongst normal people you don't and i i was guilty of it before i got this what middle of last year i i thought i saw pictures of them thought oh they look kind of neat but it was never even remotely on my radar to get s35vn 
This version is 220 with the carbon. Uh, they go up from there. Uh, they have uh, copper scales. You can get Damascus blades and all kinds of stuff. And, and they do exclusive sometimes. Um, I know that USMA Blade has one coming out uh, next week. I don't know what it is, but uh, they do exclusive. They do G10s every now and then for exclusives and stuff but uh, that are a little bit cheaper. But love this knife. Fantastic. And awesome company, Southern Grind. Portion of their uh, proceeds go to his camp, you know, to help sick kids. <laughs> what you can't zach brown the country star owns the owns the company like what you, you can't knock that so awesome knife very tough good good tough use folder but still especially in this carbon still looks classy i call this my classy beater so it's just it's just a fantastic knife and lastly uh this is one that i think again is just due to age uh people forget about it and people are forgetting mostly about the kershaw assisted line so a lot of people are more into the you know the ball bearing ones and stuff which i am too i, I mean i like those better i like non-assist i like manual better than assisted absolutely but this is one that i think of that assisted line uh has gotten forgotten more than the most and that would be the knockout and the, the kershaw knockout is just a great knife subframe lock again uh, but like I said, this one is assisted. This is an M390 version you get from USA Made Blade, uh, an exclusive. But even the regular version, the regular version, it'll get like 80 bucks with 14C28. And this version, about 100 with M390. Uh, this is the full black version. I don't remember the other colors they have. But they've come out with lots of different versions of the knockout. Kershaw is definitely not forgetting about it. They keep coming out with new colors and new versions and all that stuff. But you, again, it's just a knife you don't ever hear anybody talking about. I think a lot of us have them and just don't talk about them, but another USA made Kershaw. Just a just a fantastic knife. Nice and nice and slicey. Very thin in your pocket. Even though it's a big tall blade, you know, this dimension, it's very thin. Carries pretty well. Deep carry clip, all that stuff. Really love the knockout. You can use the thumb stud. Or or you can use the flipper, which is what I do. 90% of the time, but it does have a thumb stud there to use it if you want to. So that's the end. That's the end of my little video here. Those are my top 10 most underappreciated knives, I think, or underrated EDC knives. Underappreciated, underrated. Use whichever word you want to. Potato, potato. I've been Brian. Thanks again to Shane for letting me do this. I do really appreciate it. And again, if you like what you see here, check out my channel down below. Uh, he's going to have a link down there at Slicey Dicey. Hope to see you over there. Say hello if you do. I try and reply to as many comments as I can. And we have live shows and all that stuff. Come hang out. It'll be a lot of fun. All right. I've been Brian. Have a good one.